the radiology of left lower lobe collapse. Just to recap the normal anatomy, here is the aortic knuckle, here is the pulmonary trunk, here is the left pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery. Notice that the left pulmonary artery is always higher than the right pulmonary artery. This is because it has to negotiate a more horizontally orientated left main bronchus. Here is the left hemidiaphragm. You lose a little bit of the left hemidiaphragm when the heart sits on it. And then it becomes visible again over here. And you see more of the right hemidiaphragm than the left hemidiaphragm because of the heart shadow. On the lateral view, you can see the stomach bubble is here. It's just popping up above this diaphragm. And therefore, this one must be the right hemidiaphragm and this must be the left hemidiaphragm. It actually stops where the heart sits on the diaphragm, further confirmation that this is the left hemidiaphragm. On the PA chest radiograph, the left lower lobe occupies this degree of surface area on the two-dimensional film. Note that a proportion of the left lower lobe is projected below the diaphragm. Now anatomically, of course, it is above the diaphragm, but as the X-ray beam hits the interface tangentially, usually the dome, there is a proportion of lung that will always be projected below the diaphragm. The oblique fissure goes from T4 to the anterior cardiophrenic angle. When the left lower lobe collapses, it does so by going towards the mediastinum and towards the posterior part of the chest. Because of the volume loss, this results in shift of the hilum down towards the collapse and towards the mediastinum. Here is an example of a left lower lobe collapse on a PA chest radiograph. As the left lower lobe collapses, it becomes solid and the vacated space is occupied by slight hyperexpansion of the left upper lobe. As the X-ray beam hits the interface between the solid collapsed left lower lobe and the hyperexpanded left upper lobe, it does so tangentially, thereby causing the interface which you see projected behind the cardiac silhouette, the so-called sail sign. The left hemidiaphragm may be obscured but is often seen because now the left upper lobe is abutting the diaphragm in order for that to be seen. There is volume loss with shift of the mediastinum. And the other feature is that you get hyperexpansion of the left upper lobe and the vessels appear to be further apart in the diamond than on the contralateral side. The left hilum is shifted downwards. This detail diagram demonstrates the apparent paucity of blood vessels in each of the diamonds. The number of blood vessels don't change, it's just that they now occupy a larger volume and so it appears less dense. Here is another example of a left lower lobe collapse. You can clearly see the interface of the collapsed left lower lobe with the hyperexpanded left upper lobe. Note that in this particular case the diaphragm is more obscured, presumably because at the point that the X-ray beam strikes the dome of the left hemidiaphragm, there is still collapsed lobe abutting it. Now on the lateral film, where is the left hemidiaphragm? Well, I can see a diaphragm going from back almost to the very front, but I can't see another diaphragm. And that's because the collapse is now obscuring 
the diaphragm, which is somewhere here. And that's why it can't be seen on this view here. So there isn't enough hyperexpansion of the left upper lobe for the diaphragm to be seen. The other sign is that when you normally go down uh, the vertebral column on the lateral film, it gets blacker, but actually it's getting whiter. And this is because the collapsed left lower lobe is now superimposed over the spine when viewing it from the lateral projection. The left hilum is pulled downwards and inwards, leaving both hilar regions at the same level. Normally the left hilum is higher than the right hilum. Here is a more subtle left lower lobe collapse. The only uh, clue is really that you've lost the hemidiaphragm for more than you would expect, and there is a vague increased density. But you could also look to the diamond between the ribs, and you can see that the density of vessels is reduced on the affected side, thereby uh, giving the suspicion that this patient has left lower lobe collapse. The patient went on to have CT of the thorax. The hilum is shifted inferiorly and hidden behind the left heart border. Note again that the number of blood vessels per unit area on the affected side is reduced compared to the normal side. This is because of the hyperexpansion of the left upper lobe. Here is a CT of the same patient. You can see that there is a bulge and there is solid collapse of the left lower lobe, which can be seen here. Note the lymphadenopathy in the mediastinum. Note the volume loss on CT. And as the slices are going more posteriorly, you can see that there is a bulge adjacent to the proximal end of the collapsed lobe. This is the so-called golden S sign and is in keeping with a malignant tumour causing the left lower lobe collapse. Don't forget that most lobar collapses presenting over the age of 40 tend to be caused by endobronchial malignancy. Whereas collapse in a younger person could be due to mucus plug or an inhaled foreign body. Here is the golden S sign. This is a little lower down in the thorax. Here is the bulge, which is synonymous with the golden S sign. And it's usually describing the coronal or the PA chest radiographic appearances. And this is a mass lesion which is leading to the collapse of the left lower lobe. This is a patient with bilateral lower lobe collapse. So you can see the interface of the collapsed left lower lobe is clearly seen against the hyperexpanded left upper lobe. But also the same is true on the right hand side. Here is the interface of the collapsed right lower lobe adjacent to the middle lobe and the lower lobe which are hyperexpanded. Note that there's no real shift in the hyla relatively because both lobes are collapsed. Here is the CT of the same patient nicely showing collapse of the right lower lobe and simultaneously collapse of the left lower lobe. Now there can't be an anatomical explanation for this appearance on the basis of an endobronchial tumour. It just wouldn't work. So the more likely diagnosis would be a mucus plug and in fact that was the diagnosis in this case. Here is some further reading on lobar collapse.